Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin again from Audio Digital, back with another video. In this video, I want to do kind of a supplemental on the last one where I talked about tempo-based looping within the sampler. And someone was asking about doing kind of a sliced-based looping in the sampler, which is possible though. It's a little bit more uh, complicated, but not really that hard. So we're gonna go over that. Firstly though, I'm, I just want to show you what kind of thing we're gonna do in the sampler. In the regular clip launcher, you can take a sample. So let's take this one here and throw it in and just play it back. And this one's supposed to be played at what, 130. So we can slow it down, speed it up. And of course it sounds amazing. And that's because we're using um, the Elastic Eco here. But there's also the slices method. And what it does is it just chops the sample up into pieces and then plays it back. So if I take it down low enough, you can kind of hear how it's kind of being chopped up. And right here I have it set to ping pong because when you're chopping it up and slowing it down, there's gonna be gaps in between. So this is saying, what do I do with those gaps? And this way it's just scanning back and forth um, with the material that we have to fill in the gaps. If I turn it off, you can hear distinct gaps. Now this is also chopping it up at onsets, which um, corresponds with transients in this. Um, but if we do it to like eighth notes, it's even easier to hear those distinct splits. And that's what we can do in the sampler. We can split things at regular intervals within the uh, within the sample. We can't do it at onsets because we have no way of detecting them. Um, you know, there might be some way to do it, but it's, that's going to be way more complicated. So in any case, what we're going to try to do in the sampler is to chop up the sample at regular intervals, intervals, and then um, fill in the gaps if we're, if we're slowing it down. So let's see how we can do that. So let's take that same sample and throw it in here. And this, we'll just play it. So right now, of course, is ignoring uh, any sort of tempo or anything like that. So what we wanna do is get an LFO, firstly, and we wanna trigger it at regular intervals with the LFO. So we're gonna use the SOT, I'm sorry, the square wave here, and I'm gonna plug the square wave in and make it trigger the sampler. Um, and what I'm gonna do also is just back this off a tiny bit from z zero into negative zero. And the reason why I'm doing that, eh, that's that's not what we want, right there, is so that we get this initial climb in value and that way it'll trigger more regularly when we hit a key. And make sure you have the, the reset here on, so. So um, right now it's set to quarter notes and we're gonna do eighth notes because we're gonna split things up into eighth notes here. So that's just gonna repeat that. Now we want it also to scan across the sample while that's happening so that we can keep re-triggering at a new place. So we can get another um, LFO here. And I'll just duplicate this one and then turn it into a ramp up. And I'm gonna set this back to normal zero there. And we're going to set it to bars. And what is this thing? How many bars is it? Let's see. One, two, three. So it looks like this is four bars. So we're going to set this to four bars. And then we're going to, um, I'm going to bring out the, uh, the modular here. Like you have a modular right here that you can use, but I'm going to use this one because I'm going to add some things to it in a minute. So we're going to make it go up in value when that goes up. So now let's see what that looks like. So now we're kind of getting some st stretching. It's kind of basically just doing some sort of a really blunt method of uh, doubling. Uh, if we get it to the exact same tempo as the sample, which is again, 30, here we go, 130. It's playing now without any difference because at the exact point we get to the next kind of segment is playing from there. 
so it just plays it normal. But then as, as we go down a little bit, it's gonna kind of give us some gapping and some issues there. So let's um, refine it. What we wanna do is make it go through discrete steps um, and that way we can use, we can also scan along a loop section. And you'll see what I mean in a second here. Um, but first we wanna basically divide this up into discrete sections and eighths, right? So what we can do is use the math that the grid can already do so we don't have to try to enter in exact values every time. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is use these, uh, the constant here and the uh, divider. So we're going to divide one by um, 32, because if we're doing eighth notes and we have four, then we got 32 sections. So now we're generating this number, which is one thirty second, right? And then we can take that and connect that to a modulator. And then we can just use this to divide up a section. So like if I want the length of the loop to be one thirty second of the whole, I can just take it all the way down to zero and then modulate it up by whatever's coming into this modulator, which will always be one thirty second. So now when I play it, we can see that the loop region, oh, well, I have to turn on the loop, of course. Burp. We can see that the loop region is scanning along and it is taking up this window of one thirty second, right? Which is perfect. Problem is though, since it's moving along with the rest of the loop, it will never reach the loop point. Right? So that's a problem. So what we wanna do is make this thing kind of stay at one window and then move to the next window. And we can do that by using the quantize. So we're going to quantize the value that's coming through here so that it can only do discrete jumps. And then we're gonna use the same math to make it split up the discrete jumps into 30 seconds. So now let's see what that is. So now we're getting it so that if it is too short, it'll back up on itself. So let's slow down the tempo a lot more. There we go, we got that backing up. So that basically is what we're talking about here. Now it's basically doing the same thing that we could do in the grid using that slice, I'm sorry, in the, the clip launcher using that slicing technique. But it's a little bit poppy. It's not exactly how I want it to be. So we're gonna add some um, ability to modulate this so that it'll run a little smoother and, and we'll have some cool, um, some cool things we can do with it. So let's get some value up here and we're gonna get a modulator. We're gonna do three different values here. So I'm gonna duplicate this three times and just slide these over here to make it nice and pretty. And let's see, I'm also going to turn this on mono mode because we don't need stereo. And when we have it in mono, everything is constantly running so we can see what's happening in real time and that can kind of help us uh, with what we're trying to do here. So the first thing we wanna do is to be able to change the window size of the, the ping pong loop. So we can uh, label this uh, ping window, uh, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, window, there we go. And um, so how we can change the window size is to modulate the uh, loop forward a bit. And we don't wanna do it too much, probably, let's, let's do it to six, uh, 0 0.06 or so. And we'll see if that works for us in a minute. And then we wanna drag backward the length by the exact same amount. And over here, if we enter into values, that's gonna be best for a lot of uses because we wanna be exact here. So now when we turn this value up, we can see that the window is shrinking and actually is shrinking beyond what we even need. So I'm gonna take 
this down a little bit to maybe I'll take it to four to probably get this. Uh, four and four. All right. So now when we take it all the way down, yeah, it's pretty good. It's close enough. So if we take it down really slow, we can get kind of a stall sound out of it. But again, it's really poppy and buzzy. So this next thing we wanna do is give the ping an offset. So we can call this one a ping off, whatever. And um, so what we wanna do with this, I'm gonna make it so that we can change the position of the window. I'm gonna make it bipolar here and I'm gonna take this and say push forward about four. It doesn't really, it doesn't have to be exact. We just have to have some room to move. So what we can do here is back off the loop point a little bit from the next, um, the next piece so that we don't get a transient that we're looping into the mix. And that's going to help get rid of some of the popping here. Back it up a little more. Let me see how much we're getting off of there. Yeah, so we're not so much on this uh, transient here. We can see I'm moving closer on, I'm, I'm like in it now, and now I'm a little bit back off of it. Now, the next thing we wanna do here is turn on a little bit of this um, crossfading. Now we, we got rid of all the pops and we're doing pretty good. We can even push the window a little bit closer and get a little bit of a stall sound going without any pops. So that's kind of cool. And the last thing I do sometimes is just uh, put in a variable that lets me change the start time of the um, of each um, slice. And a lot of times I don't change this at all, but it's kind of fun to have. So I just so call this um, start, start. Offset. Eh. My typing is horrible. All right. So start offset, and then we can make this go a little bit off from the beginning. That's probably way too much, just like that or something. And then if I press into it, it gives it a bit of a different sound. Kind of gets rid of the, the starting transients. Anyway, it's something you can play with. So now we pretty much have a, a fully working um, uh, tempo-based ping pong slice loop thing set up here. That sounds pretty good. And it's pretty flexible. We can get all kinds of different tempos out of it without it sounding too horrible. And that kind of stall sound can be desirable or the backwards uh, drums can be kind of desirable. And that works pretty great, pretty great. So that's basically how you can do this. Hopefully this is something you can take and get inspired with and use for other purposes. But even within just using it for this looping, it's, it's pretty clean sounding and it's interesting sounding. So I think it's worth um, pursuing. Also, when you put in a different loop, like let's see, you know, a different one here. So if I just put this one in, let's say, I'm gonna to have to return on the loop and return on the, the crossfading. And then it should, should work okay. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for uh, watching my videos and for your comments and support. And um, let me know if you have any questions. And hey, have a good day, bye.